to dominate the whole world by Islam, including Britain. That is my ambition. Radicalization is calling for the Sharia nowadays. Radicalization is exposing the British government. I believe the British government are the main radicalizing force for people going abroad and fighting alongside their brethren. And this is the biggest favor which the British government could do for organizations like ourselves to ban us. For more than 20 years, this homegrown Islamist scholar has long been accused of encouraging, promoting and selling extremism. He's been the UK face of IS propaganda, yet has always remained just out of reach of the law. No democracy, no liberalism, no freedom, no man-made law. His message has never changed. His lectures on stage and online constantly proclaim support for domination. Next time, when your child is at school and the teacher says, what do you want when you grow up? What is your ambition? They should say to dominate the whole world by Islam, including Britain. That is my ambition. It was those words, together with an online, authored, oath of allegiance to the Caliphate state, that finally led to his conviction in a criminal court. Last month, a jury here at the Old Bailey found him and co-accused Mohammed Rahman guilty of supporting a prescribed organization, namely ISIS. But another ongoing trial has prevented us from reporting those verdicts until now. After years of trying, the authorities had found a way to silence a man who has groomed the minds of impressionable young men to share a vision that would prime them for battle. It's not just the hapless converts who join his groups, although there are many of those. It's also um, uh, children of Muslims, uh, who uh, parents who see their children being taken away from them. If you talk to their parents, they describe him as a body snatcher. The body snatcher turned this lost soul around within weeks. First it was meetings for teenager Brustom Ziamani, then marches, then something far more threatening. He's now serving a 19-year sentence for carrying a knife in a bag with a plan to behead a soldier. In public, Chowdhury, to keep within the law, always avoided direct reference first to Al-Qaeda, then IS. Yet one of his most loyal associates couldn't wait for the chance to join from the day the Caliphate State was declared in 2014. If you want to provide me with a plane ticket, inshallah we can see what, what can happen from there. So if I get you a plane ticket, you're good? And a passport. And a passport. And, you um, haven't got a passport? Well, I've got a passport, but I think um, after these laws, I wouldn't be too surprised if it gets taken away. Flag of these By the time they tried, it was too so, late. Um, Siddhartha Dar jumped bail. One day when the Sharia comes, you'll see this black flag everywhere. To end up posting this photograph from Syria, and the words, with my newborn son, Generation Khilafah. And Chowdhury's long shadow hangs over the killing of Fusilier Lee Rigby. His killer, Michael Adabalajo, in the past, attended some of the clerics' countless demonstrations. We've identified over 100 people who've either been convicted of terrorist-related offences, carried out terrorist-related offences, or tried to carry out violent uh, attacks, who've been connected to him. So we've always said he's, he's a gateway to terror. It's been a gateway to a network which has spread across Europe. Chowdhury's alleged to have set up, in effect, Al Mujahirun franchises to help similar minds exert their influence on similar groups. His reach extended into Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands. He helped set up Sharia for Belgium, which radicalised those involved in the Paris attacks and many more who headed to Syria. Likewise in France, Germany, Italy, Portugal and Spain. He also helped launch another Sharia for branch in Indonesia, which has seen as many as 800 jihadis go off to Syria. His real importance is not what he, in what he says online, but in what he does. The organisation, the way he builds these networks on the ground, these groups, lifestyles, people who live together, follow his rules, uh, it, is, it is that status as a cult figure, that, that's where he's the most dangerous. The one-time lawyer always managed to evade prosecution often teasing the authorities, but careful not to cross the line. He organised this demonstration outside the Lebanese embassy, brandishing placards with the acronym ISIS clearly visible, but standing for Islamic State is Solution. 
Two months later, ISIS was prescribed and those banners disappeared. Do you support violence mm -hmm. to achieve the goal of a worldwide Ummah? In his countless TV appearances, Chowdhury never condemned the atrocities, the suicide bombs, the beheadings, the mass slaughters. Do you not worry that it is your voice that's helping radicalize people who want to do this? But his constant messages on social media has finally led to his downfall. You deserve to be arrested, prosecuted, jailed for the rest of your life. That is what you, sir, deserve. You're a violent and heinous terrorist. I will say to you. But it won't be prison for the rest of the cleric's life. His conviction for supporting ISIS carries a maximum 10-year sentence.